Hi, welcome to this, the last video in our introductory series, which is introducing industry concepts that are utilized in the staff room program. Today we are going to talk about two subjects, one being glass setting blocks and the other color-coded gaskets. Let's start talking about glass setting blocks. First of all, what is a glass setting block? Well, it's a small piece of plastic that is used during the glazing process on an aluminium window. Now those glazing blocks, I will pop up a picture here. These blocks are sold through the Creoco distribution partners in packets of 50. For a packet of 50, it's less than 50 Rand. So you are looking at less than one Rand for a strip of seven glass setting blocks. And those glass setting blocks are tapered in such a way that you can use two of those blocks together to create a, an exact thickness of that glass setting block that you want. Now, a glass setting block is not allowed to be a piece of cardboard folded and jammed in between the glass and the aluminium frame. It's not allowed to be a piece of timber from a packaging or from a pallet that you do the same with. It has to meet certain criteria. And those criteria are, first of all, it has to have a hardness between 50 and 90 on the Shaw A hardness scale. So that is a scale which measures the hardness of flexible plastics and your glass seating block has to be between 50 and 90 on that Shaw A hardness scale. It has to be made out of either neoprene, EPDM or silicon. Those are the only materials that are allowed to be used. It has to have a minimum thickness of three millimeters and you need a total length of at least 27 millimeters per square meter of glass that you're glazing. So those are the requirements of what these glass setting blocks have to be. What then is the purpose of that glass setting block? Well, that glass setting block has actually got three functions. The first function is to separate the glass and the aluminium. By law, your glass is not allowed to touch the aluminium. It has to be kept separate. And one of the main reasons for that is because aluminium and glass have different coefficients of expansion. So what will happen is if you glaze a window and the glass is touching the aluminium directly and that window is sitting in the sun, as that metal and glass heat up, they are going to expand at different rates and that is going to create a force along the edge of the glass, which is what causes the glass just to suddenly crack. So glass and aluminium may not touch each other. The second function is to keep the glass away from water. So if I have a, a typical aluminium profile, let's just have a look at, for example, an outer frame and that outer frame would typically have a glazing rebate where the glazing lip clips in that during when it when that window gets wet you can have a situation that water can sit in that glazing rebate and if my glass is sitting straight down onto my aluminium then that glass can lie in the water and another requirement is that your glass may not sit in water, particularly for your laminated glasses because it causes that glass to actually delaminate. 
So part of the regulations are your glass may not sit in water. So your glass setting block, which is now going to be sitting in this position here, is going to prevent that piece of glass from sitting in the water. Okay? And the third function for the glass setting block is to distribute the weight. of the glass onto the correct part of that frame or that sash or that door or whatever it is that you are glazing. And although these two functions, the first two functions are important, this last one is probably the most important. And it's probably the one that causes the most problems in the industry. Because people don't understand this they either do not put in glass setting blocks at all, or they put the glass setting blocks in the wrong location. And then they can't understand why the door sags and starts scraping on the floor tiles below. Well, I've got a simple method of remembering where those glass setting blocks need to be. Okay, so by example, let's say I need to glaze the following. I have a door frame which has been installed and I have got a door in that door frame and what I want to do is I want to install my piece of glass. Right, let's assume that this is my hinge side. So I'd have two hinges sitting at the top of the door and one hinge sitting at the bottom of the door. Now I need to consider where the weight of this piece of glass is going to be distributed. If I distribute the weight on this point of the door, on the far end of the door away from the hinges, then what is going to happen is that door frame is going to sag. Because of the lever effect of the weight on the far side of that door, it's going to cause the door to go out of square, it's going to sag, and then it's going to scrape against the floor at the bottom. So what I want to do is I want to distribute the weight of this piece of glass as close to this edge of the door as possible. The closer it is to the hinges, the less there is this lever effect and the less this door is going to sag. So the first and the most important glass setting block is that glass setting block that I put in that position there. Because what that is going to do is that is going to concentrate the weight of this piece of glass onto this edge of the door and it's going to be the strongest side to support it. Okay. Once I put that piece of glass in, obviously what's going to happen is that this piece of glass is going to want to fall over now because it is only supported on the one edge. So the second most important glass setting block is the one that you put up in this top right hand corner. Because what that glass setting block does is it keeps your glass straight and it prevents your glass from falling over. Alright, then I have nothing to stop the overall piece of glass moving. So what I will do is I'll put in a glass setting block on this edge to keep the glass nicely packed in between the left and the right and I'll put a glass setting block in on this top corner to prevent the glass moving up and down. Now because this is a piece of glass in a door which is a moving item we have to support that glass all the way around so that glass can't fall over, it can't shift left or right, it can't bounce up and down. So the correct way to set your glass setting blocks for a side hand door or a side hand sash is exactly like that. All right, let's take that same logic and apply it to a shop front frame. If I'm building a shop front frame like this, let's make that my, my saw. And let's say I am wanting to glaze 
this piece of glass sits in in here. Where is the strongest point on this frame? Would it be better for the weight of that glass to be situated on this transom close to the intersection of that money? Or would it be better for the weight of that piece of glass to be sitting in the center of that transom? Now obviously if I'm going to take the weight of this glass and I'm going to put it onto the center of that transom, that transom is going to tend to sag. So what I want to do in a fixed pane of glass is I want to put a glass setting block on that edge as close to the intersection with the mullion as possible and I want to put a second glass setting block on that edge as close to my outer frame as possible. That will distribute the weight of that piece of glass to the outer edges of that transom and that's where the transom is the strongest. So a lot of people worry about transom sagging and they say well especially if you put in a piece of double glazing above it. That should never be a concern because as long as your glass setting blocks are distributing the weight of that piece of glass to the outer edges, those are the strongest points of the transom okay, and the transom should not sag. So on a fixed pane of glass, because we are not worried about this opening and closing and, and moving around, we don't need to do anything else. We can get away with just putting those two glass setting blocks. Now in every manual available in the Starfront program on all of Wispico systems, uh, the following diagram is available. And this diagram will show you exactly what where to put your glass setting blocks on each of the different configurations. So it covers top hand sashes, side hand sashes, doors, sliding windows, pivot windows, all the different combinations are available. So please understand the use of glass setting blocks. It is going to save you a lot of time and money not having to go back to sites and say why is this door sagging, why is this window not closing properly. All right, so let's move on to our second topic, which is color-coded gaskets. Okay, a couple of years back, the speaker introduced the concept of color-coded gaskets into the industry. Now, this was done at great effort and great expense to the speaker. And a lot of manufacturers don't even consider utilizing the color-coded gaskets. And yet there are a lot of benefits, a lot of savings that you can achieve by utilizing those color-coded gaskets. All right, so... First of all, what are the color-coded gaskets? Well, they are standard gaskets that are used in the glazing of aluminium systems, but the speaker has introduced a small strip of color onto each of those gaskets. I will show you some pictures of those gaskets in a moment, so you can see exactly what we're talking about. And what they have done is there are four primary colors that are used. We're talking here about the single glazing gaskets. I'm not talking about double glazing at this stage. So the butterfly gasket is always orange and it has an orange strip on it like this. All right. And the same butterfly will get used on all situations. Now the speaker has modified all of the dies on the entire Swift range, that is everything from the Swift 28 window right through to the Swift 38 window, plus the entire Clip 44 range, plus the Palace, plus, plus the Vistafold. All of those systems have been redesigned to cater for color-coded gaskets. Now, the way the speaker achieved this is if we take a typical aluminium profile and that profile has got a bead sitting in it. They have standardized this glazing gap. 
across all of those systems, that glazing gap is 13 millimeters. That's when we're talking about obviously a standard single glazing bead, not the double glazing bead. So whether we're talking Swift 28, Clip 44, Palace or Vistafold, on your normal standard 13mm bead, that glazing gap has been standardized to 13mm. And what that means is that now I can have one range of gaskets which are entirely dependent on the thickness of glass that I'm glazing. So, let's have a look at what that range consists of. We start off with a red gasket. which looks like this and that is suitable for 4 millimeter glass then we have a blue gasket which looks like this and that is suitable for 5 millimeter glass we then have a green gasket which looks like this and that is suitable for 6 and 6.38 millimeter glass and finally we have a yellow gasket can't draw in yellow so I'll just use black which looks like this and that gasket is suitable for 8 to 8.38 millimeter glass so it doesn't matter which system you are glazing, whether it's one of the Swift window systems, Clip 44, Palace or Vistafold, these gaskets for single glazing always apply. So what happens in a typical factory? How does the guy choose the wedge gasket? Well, he's got a window to glaze, he goes to the store, there's a massive pile of gaskets all tangled up and lined all over the floor as I've witnessed in many shops. So if the wedge gasket falls out, then he knows that wedge gasket was too thin. He'll take that two or three meters, go and chuck it in the pile of spaghetti on the floor, go to the next size up and strip off a couple of meters of that wedge gasket. The worst case scenario is when he goes and chooses a wedge gasket, starts tapping it in to glaze that window, but the wedge gasket is too thick, so it cracks the glass, he takes that wedge gasket, chucks it onto the pile, goes and gets another piece of glass cut. That costs you money and that wastes money. So, by introducing color-coded gaskets, it ensures that every time the guy is glazing a 4mm piece of glass, you will always use a red gasket. And if someone has stripped off a couple of meters of that gasket and is lying in a pile on the floor, if I'm just looking for a short piece of gasket, I don't always have to go to the brand new roll and pull off more gasket. Immediately that gasket lying on the floor, I can identify which is the red gasket, find myself a, a, a length of off cut, take it and use that to finish glazing my window. So guys, really at the end of the day, it saves you a lot of money. It reduces the total number of gaskets that you have to have in stock. Because now you can have one butterfly, which is the orange gasket, and you can carry those four wedge gaskets. And you can glaze everything from Swift 28 right up to the Vista Fold range. So please be intelligent with your buying. Don't just take the price and say, oh, the color-coded gasket is 10% more expensive than a standard gasket. I don't even know if that is the case. I don't sell the gaskets. But even if it is, it's actually going to save you a lot of money. It's going to save you money in breakages of glass and it's going to save you money in offcuts. Because even if I take a piece of material and chuck it on the floor, I can always identify that gasket again because of the color coded strip in it. So once again, thanks for your time, for watching this video. Please stay safe, stay positive and Starting next week, we will be covering working with the Starfront program itself. Thank you.